great mistakes is to limit the church to a gathering for spiritual information, for spiritual inspiration, and for acclaiming the greatness of God. And that is much of what the church should be doing. It is unfortunate that we have missed the legal nature of the church. The job of the church, this legal entity, is to be a little bit of heaven a long way from home. Today on the Songtime Broadcast, we continue our year in review. This message from Tony Evans encourages us and reminds us that we have been commissioned to advance the kingdom of God so that even the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. That means that we must move the gospel forward. Stay tuned for that message, but first, we're going to hear from Alistair Begg, who encourages us to be bold and brave in our faith as we proclaim Christ. The many voices are coming together for that one message. I'm your host, Adam Miller. You're listening to Songtime Radio. I have already said this so many times this past year, but I'll say it again, especially now that we're in our year in review, that with every other organization out there posturing a message of doom and gloom, we, the church, the followers of Jesus Christ, have a message of hope that breaks into that darkness. No matter how heavy and overwhelming the darkness might feel, the smallest of lights is able to pierce through it. The the darkness has no weight. There's no substance to it at all. In fact, the substance and the power and the light comes from the flame that is in us. As we see that in the power of the gospel, that Christ has changed us, our witness, our testimony of what God has done. We have a message of hope that this world so desperately needs, but you know what? We have been really beat down, so much so that we are not very bold in proclaiming that faith. In fact, we are afraid to speak up in many cases. We're afraid to be shot down and afraid to be criticized for our faith. Well, our our next guest, well, someone we talked to earlier this year is Alistair Begg. He wrote a book called Brave by Faith, God-Sized Confidence in a Post-Christian World. And I asked him to explain to us how uh, we can have boldness in a world where everything seems to be targeting Christians as the bad guys in our culture. And what, what could encourage us to be bold in the midst of such darkness in our world? It's a, it's a great question, isn't it? Because it's, you know, Ecclesiastes 3 is helpful. There is a time to this and there's a time not. There's a time to, there's a time not. There's a time to speak. There's a time to be silent. And and the problem for the problem for me is my wife is says you you get the timing wrong. You know? <laughs> it's like a, that was good, but it was the wrong time or whatever it might be. And 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 so we we can get very very bold about things that um, stir us, but they may not be the things that we ought to be leading with um, a political perspective that because of our background or you know our. Uh, just our political perspective, we feel very strongly about certain things. But I, I've never felt that that was my responsibility to try and uh, manage. Um, but the idea of boldness, um, I spoke uh, about two weeks ago now to a group of fellows out actually in, in Maryland. And I, I, I tried to speak. I was going to say I spoke, but I tried to speak uh, on what Paul says um, in uh, at the end of Ephesians, after he's he's prayed for them and he's gone through the warfare and everything else, and, and then he says, uh, uh, you know, he he urges them to keep alert with all perseverance to keep praying, and then he says, and also for me, hmm. and also for me, also for you, what that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel. That's where we need the boldness to proclaim the mystery of the gospel for which he says, I'm an ambassador in chains that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. That takes you back to uh, 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 Peter and John. And uh, uh, they, they say that there is salvation in no one else. They bring them in. They give them a good talking to. Uh, they release them. And, the, and, the, and the, the church, such as it is, receives them. And doesn't say, oh, dear, 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 we're going to have to silence this up because we're going to be in dreadful trouble. No, they they go on their knees and they say, God, give them the power to declare this message 
all the more boldly. Let, let them do it with boldness. You've been preaching and teaching for years, decades, and you've years. written many books. You've traveled around the world and proclaimed the gospel in various uh, uh, cultures and countries. You have been, uh, even with your radio ministry, have had a prominent ministry within our culture, and you are faithfully and boldly proclaiming the gospel, but the world's just getting worse and worse. Doesn't that discourage you in some way? You know, we, we feel like we're doing all this work, but we're fighting against a, a, uh, a losing battle. Uh, it feels that way against our culture. How do you keep going and persevere in the midst of what's happening around us? Well, I think, I, I think yes, it's very easy to be discouraged. It's very easy to look and say, yeah, okay, well, do the percentages. How many people are how many people are within the sound of the gospel in Greater Cleveland on an average Sunday? It's minuscule. Um, but the, I, I, I love what Jesus says. You know, he, he, says, he says to his people, Fear not, little flock, for it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He doesn't, he doesn't say... You guys are doing great. I mean, you're starting to make a radical impact. This is going to go from strength to strength. Have your best life now. I mean, he, he doesn't say that. He, he says, now, I know you're probably going to be paralyzed with fear. Don't be afraid. Little flock. Because it is a father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So so how do, how do we do it? Well, a confidence in the promises of God. Confidence in the promises of you know God's covenant that He He will not break His covenant. He's true to His word. All of His promises find their yes and their amen in Jesus. And uh, confidence in the in the power of the Scriptures that 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 the Word of God does the work of God by the Spirit of God. You know, in in the in the people of God. I got in a conversation with somebody who talked about passion in preaching. And this guy was like, well, if you're not passionate. And I said, well, what, 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 what do you mean? And then he said this and this and this and this. And I respect this guy very much. And I said, well, you know, it's an interesting thought because what we are are farmers. So we, we, we are seed sowers. I said, so do you think like if the farmer goes down a field going, oh, ho, sow the seed, sow the seed, sow the seed, 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 you know, it's like that's going to be more effective than if he's had a bad day. He's not speaking to his wife. He needs to repent of his miserable lifestyle, and he, but he's still sowing the seed. Where does his confidence lie? Not in his ability to sow, not in his enthusiasm about the sowing, because he can plant, he can water, but only God can make it grow. So that's why the whole, the whole thing is, is uh, wonderfully and horribly humbling simultaneously. <laughs> We've been listening to my interview from earlier this year with Alistair Begg. The book is called Brave by Faith, God-Sized Confidence in a Post-Christian World. You can find out more information about his book by giving us a call. It's 508-362-7070. And let's encourage each other to be bold in proclaiming our faith because this world needs a message of hope in these dark times. And speaking about that, we're going to move now to our continued study. And as we review our our time in the Gospel of Matthew, this message from Tony Evans takes us to Matthew 16. This is where Jesus tells Peter, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Uh, Tony Evans brings this to such great clarity and, and winsome uh, wisdom He gives us some insight on how we as Christians are meant to advance the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus. Here is Tony Evans. Much of the chaos in the culture today has nothing to do with the competing teams on the field, but it has everything to do with a poor officiating crew. The officiating crew called the church who is supposed to be on the field, but not of the field, in the middle of the chaos, but not part of the chaos has actually contributed to it. It is the failure of the church that has greatly contributed to the chaos in the culture. Jesus was in Caesarea Philippi in Matthew chapter 16. He asked two questions. His first question was to his disciples, who do men say that I am? All the answers were good. John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah, one of the prophets. But all the answers were wrong. 
But then Jesus turns to his disciples and he says, but who do you say that I am? And you can't see it in the English, but in the Greek text, the word you is plural. So he wasn't talking to Peter, he was talking to the group. Peter, who must have wore peppermint socks the way he loved to keep his foot in his mouth, was correct on this occasion. <laughs> Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus declares to him, you've said correctly. He looks at Peter and he says, now you are Petros, a stone. But I'm going to build my program, my church, not on a stone, but on a rock. The Greek word Petra, translated rock, was used in classical Greek of a collection of stones that had been knitted together to form a bigger slab, a bigger cliff, or a rocky ledge. It was stones connected to one another. I would like to suggest that whatever the church is, it will be built by the coming together of individual stones that would make something bigger than any one stone could ever be on its own. In fact, Peter himself says, ye are all living stones come together to form one spiritual house, which explains why there is so much disunity in the kingdom of God. Because if the enemy can keep the stones from ever becoming the rock, he can keep the church from ever fulfilling its agenda. The word ecclesia means called out ones. But the question on the floor is called out from what to what for what reason? It was used of men and women who were called out from the general populace to legislate on behalf of the rest of the citizens of that state. It was a legislative agency. You see, I think one of the great mistakes that we have made is to limit the church and its definition to a weekly gathering for an hour well, that's if you're white, two and a half hours if you're black, to, to, to limit the definition of the church to a gathering for spiritual information, for spiritual inspiration, and for acclaiming the greatness of God. And that is much of what the church should be doing. It is unfortunate that we have missed, in my opinion, the legal nature of the church, that this ecclesia has been established to legislate from heaven to history, from eternity into time. The job of the church, this legal entity, is to be a little bit of heaven a long way from home. It's supposed to be where the values of eternity are operating in the location of history so that history gets to see what heaven looks like when heaven addresses that particular issue. Notice the offensive nature of Jesus' statement. He says, I'm doing the building, the gates of hell are attempting to do the stopping. We often get it backwards. We're trying to stop hell. But that's not what Jesus says the church is. Therefore, if hell is stopping the church, then the church must not be being what Jesus is building. Because Jesus said, the church that I'm building, hell is not stopping. So if hell is stopping the church, we must be building our church using his name. And so no matter how many songs we sing or sermons we hear, if there is not the legislative action of the church to rule on behalf of this bigger thing called the kingdom of God, then we have great services and limited impact. He says, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He says, the way you're going to win in history is I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom. In verse 19, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom. Let's get this straight. The government does not have the keys to the kingdom. And if you are looking for the solutions to America to land on Air Force One, you are going to be grossly disappointed. He says, I'm going to give you keys to the kingdom. What do keys do? Isaiah 22, 22, they gain you access. You ever been in a hurry and not been able to find your keys? That means you're not going anywhere. Because you don't have access to your car. Or maybe you're like me. You have keys on your key ring and you don't even remember where some of them go. <laughs> so they're useless keys. I am going to give you the keys to the kingdom. And he's talking to the foundation of the church. It is my conviction today that the church has been using the wrong keys. And one of the primary keys today is that of politics. It has its place. We must be politically engaged, but it is not the kingdom. 
He says, I will give you the keys to the kingdom, and how will you know if the keys are working? He says, because whatever you bind on earth will have been bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Binding and loosing means permitting or forbidding. I'm going to give you authorization of authority. You know the answer to America or any other culture? It's the church. But it's not the church as individual stones. It's the church as a rock. The word kingdom is from the Greek word basilia, and it refers to the manifestation, the visible demonstration of the comprehensive rule of God over every area of life. There is no issue outside of the kingdom. This is not a day for ordinary sermons and ordinary churches singing ordinary songs to ordinary people when we're watching our nation fall apart, when we're watching unbiblical worldviews being promoted. This is not a time for polite speeches to polite people. This is a time for the ecclesia to legislate from heaven to history to serve notice on this world. The kingdom of God has arrived. It's time for the church of Jesus Christ to do one of two things. To practice being kingdom people, living kingdom lives, perpetuating a kingdom mentality through the influence of the church or take down the sign. Don't don't call yourself Christian and not practice. Don't say you're a church and don't practice because we're living in a day when the culture is bleeding to death. Thank you for all you do and God bless you. Matthew 16 is such a pivotal point in the study of the Gospel of Matthew because Jesus is commissioning Peter and the apostles and and everyone that would come after them with this power to move the kingdom of God forward. But here is the key element. As we see in the Great Commission at the very be- at the very end of the Gospel of Matthew, we are called to make disciples by going. And this is why uh, so many people understand this in the missions concept. We need to be sending uh, missionaries to the foreign field, and we need to be sending people to unreached people groups. Absolutely, that is exactly what Matthew 28 is talking about. But it's also saying that we need to be going. We need to be moving. We need to be advancing the kingdom forward because we cannot stand here on the outside of the gates and look at them and say, well, they're too big, they're too hard, they're too difficult. There's no way we'll be able to break down these walls. There's no way we'll be able to get through these gates. That is how we are defeated by standing still, by refusing to move, by, by, by being too afraid to, to step forward in faith. Jesus told Peter to step out of the boat. He had to overcome his fear as he walked out to meet Jesus. And it was only after he took his eyes off of Jesus and started to be afraid again by the storm that was, that was threatening their lives that he started to sink. When we are moving forward for the sake of the kingdom of God, he says the gates of hell will not prevail against it. But you have to knock down those doors. You have to knock down those walls. You have to push through those gates and know that when you do, they will not stand against you because we are moving the gospel forward. We are so beat up. We are so reluctant to share our faith because we've been rejected. We are afraid of potential rejection. But I have to tell you, over the past year and a half, I have shared the gospel with many different people. And you know what their response is? It's not one of rejection. It's not one of criticism. It's not one of derogatory tearing down Christians. No, they're saying, I am so lost in darkness. I don't, they may not even believe it, but they're just encouraged and they, they want to hear a word of hope. And you have that message inside of you. God is doing a great work, but he works within his church. He works within his people to advance his kingdom forward. So you are recruited. I didn't recruit you. Jesus recruited you. He commissioned you. And he is telling you to go. Break down those gates and move and advance the gospel forward. I hope that this encourages you. I really do. Because we want to see a great movement of the Spirit here in New England and the Northeast. And I know it's going to happen because you have been blessed and you have shared that blessing with somebody else and you are continuing to share that blessing with others and you're sharing that blessing with us. 
uh, through your end of the year donation. Really, the only way that we can stay on the air is with your generous support. So write to us at Songtime Radio, P.O. Box 100, Barnstable, Massachusetts, 02630, or give us a call. It's 508-362-7070. You can also head over to our website at songtime.com or look us up on social media. On behalf of everyone here at Songtime and our late founder, Dr. John DeBrine, who passed away earlier this year, was promoted into heaven. He has always encouraged you to grow in grace so that you won't groan in disgrace. We want to thank you for listening. From Cape Cod, I'm Adam Miller with our theme verse, Matthew 28, 19, and 20, the words of Jesus commissioning each and every one of you to advance his kingdom forward. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age.